Hello, everyone, and welcome to Edison TV. My name is Aaron Atkar, and I'm a healthcare analyst here at Edison. We're joined today by a new guest, Dr. Leopold Bertia, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Mendes. Mendes is a Sweden-based immuno-oncology company, and we're going to do a few Edison TV interviews throughout this year, focusing on some of the broader themes in which the company is working. Today, the underlying theme is cell therapy manufacturing. For now, we welcome our guest. How are you doing, Leopold? Fine, thank you, Aaron. Nice to meet you, and hello to everyone listening. Likewise. So for cell-based therapies more generally, what are some of the key considerations and challenges for biotech and pharma companies when thinking about manufacturing? Yeah, I would say there are three main uh, aspects to that. So the first one is, is linked to the product complexity. Uh, here we are not uh, dealing with small molecules or even, let's say, uh, complex uh, proteins. We are dealing with living cells, typically living immune cells. So the, the first challenge uh, biotechs have typically is to design a first uh, process for uh, early manufacturing of, uh, of these products. And um, this is obviously needed until you can uh, do, a, let's say, first proof of concept in the clinics. And for that, you need to be quick. Uh, but the process needs to be fit to, to let's say, define the product uh, sufficiently well to demonstrate, let's say, uh, the potential in the clinics as a new therapy. So this is challenging because um, what happens later is, uh, is that you have to scale up. So once you have, let's say, a proof of concept, let's say phase one, phase two, you have shown that the safety is acceptable, that there is uh, an activity. So at that uh, time point, it's, it's almost a bit too late to, uh, to start uh, developing a scale-up process. So you typically need to start earlier and, uh, and this is uh, one, let's say, the second challenge of the development teams who uh, have to, to set up a new larger process with a scale up, but uh, they have to think about that it will be probably the last time they change the process significantly because uh, once you, you prepare this process for the next clinical studies, which are typically the uh, pivotal studies, uh, once you have done this, it's then too late uh, to start again changing the process. So uh, the teams and our teams, uh, the same obviously, had to, to take uh, very tough decisions uh, to decide on the scale, to decide also on the optimization uh, grade of the process, and uh, thinking about the fact that uh, the, let's say, first industrial process uh, they develop is the one which will be kept uh, actually for a long time. So that's a very difficult and challenging decision. And uh, within this uh, process, uh, the teams have also to think about what we call uh, comparability. So the comparability is, is based on the fact that, uh, uh, let's say, differently from, uh, from, from small molecules or, or, let's say, less complex uh, products, uh, you really have to show that the, the process changes do not impact too much or not impact in a critical way uh, your product. So this means <clears throat> that uh, you, you do not only have to show that the product looks the same uh, you know, analyzing certain things, but you also have to, uh, to do a risk assessment on the changes in your process to show and to demonstrate that these changes do not have a high risk on changing things uh, you do not necessarily uh, uh, see in your product because it's a very complex uh, system. So that's something which uh, biotech experts and cell therapy experts uh, know uh, perfectly. Uh, and it's part of our job to, uh, to analyze this, uh, these aspects when we develop the uh, industrial process. Last but not least, uh, there, is, uh, there are considerations linked to, uh, to the manufacturing strategy and to the cost of goods. Um, and these aspects are a bit linked or, uh, you know, quite a lot linked to what I said before. Uh, because, as I said before, you cannot change the process again and again. So the cost of goods is something which you have to think about very early when you develop the process uh, to have a certain control of these costs uh, because, yes, you will be able to do some, let's say, uh, optimizations, but not uh, any more larger changes 
uh, unless you 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 will have to do uh, clinical experiments etc to demonstrate that uh, you did not change your product um, so this, the manufacturing strategy is a, is a, is a big decision which uh, uh, companies have to take uh, to decide for example if they want to do it internally or externally so uh, many companies do not uh, set up internal manufacturing from the beginning for many reasons. Uh, either they don't have the know-how or they don't have the money or they don't want to take the risk. So often uh, companies have to select a CDMO. The CDMO have to be suitable and it's a very tough decision as well because um, once you decide uh, to go with a CDMO and you, and you embark, let's say, a, a uh, almost a two-year exercise to to set up a new manufacturing. Uh, then um, you rather take a you know um, a very sound decision because uh, you you don't want to repeat all this exercise. So this is very important uh, aspects of uh, of manufacturing and especially cell and gene therapy products. Mm, thanks very much. That was that was very insightful. Turning now more specifically to to Mendes's lead candidate, which is which is Vidadensil. This is an off-the-shelf therapy. So can you discuss the significance of this and perhaps some advantages compared to patient-derived therapies? Yeah, thanks for this question, uh, Aaron. It's, it's a very important feature of this experimental uh, new immunotherapy, uh, Vididensel, which is an active immunotherapy, as we call it. Um, it's an off-the-shelf. So this is very important uh, because, first, because the availability to the patient is the first aspect which we have to, to focus on. So the patient will be able to access uh, this therapy immediately upon prescription by a doctor. So differently from, uh, uh, let's say, autologous uh, uh, therapies, uh, we, we do not, the patient does not have to wait uh, for the therapy to be manufactured um, and released for, uh, for use, which takes obviously time and is also very expensive. Um, so in, in our case, uh, we have product vials which we manufacture. Uh, they are <clears throat> on inventory. They can be stored up to five years under liquid nitrogen. So it's very cold. It's about minus 150 degrees uh, Celsius. Or they can also uh, be stored up to one year at minus 80, which is something which many hospitals have, and it's very convenient for, for hospitals. So uh, we have this flexibility and really... Um, the first very important aspect is the immediate availability for the patient. Uh, second uh, important uh, uh, feature of this off-the-shelf uh, therapy is that uh, Vididensel is manufactured from a proprietary cell line. So it means that uh, not only it's not um, a therapy which we have to, in to do individually for every patient, but it's also not uh, started uh, using, for example, donor cells uh, you know, uh, healthy donor cells, which is also a possibility to do, uh, uh, let's say, off-the-shelf uh, production. So here we are using a proprietary cell line, which is transformed, which is transformed into <clears throat> an active dendritic cell. And uh, this dendritic cell is uh, something which for every batch, for every production will be, will look exactly the same because it comes from a, from a cell line. So this is also a very important uh, aspect, which I would say makes uh, uh, Vididensel a very interesting uh, potential new therapy. Concerning the cost, last but not least, uh, this is also an important uh, factor which uh, looks uh, positive for, for, for Vididensel is that um, we, we do not have, here have uh, an individual production for every patient. So uh, as I said before, it's off the shelf. So the inherent very high cost of uh, manufacturing one production for every patient is, uh, is not the case here. And, and, uh, and we really have, let's say, a more standard production of, uh, of a product which we can store and use uh, whenever, we, whenever it's needed for, for patients. Mm. So Mendes is engaged in a strategic manufacturing alliance with NorthX Biologics. Can you summarize what this relationship entails and how it's progressing? Yeah, so it's a it's a strategic alliance. So it's uh, it's not only let's say using a CDMO. Uh, it's it's really something which we have uh, uh, thought about uh, for for a long time. We have selected uh, Northex as a as a CDMO 
uh, to transfer our new uh, industrial process uh, for the manufacturing of VDD cell for pivotal trials, and also as a preparation of uh, of the launch uh, uh, later on. So uh, this uh, this collaboration uh, started uh, uh, end of uh, summer twenty three. Uh, and it includes um, the uh, the adaptation of uh, of a facility, uh, the installation of all the equipments, the whole training of of the personnel, uh, setting up the whole system which we call GMP system. So this means um, what we call batch records and, and analytical procedures. So all the tools you need to to manufacture a uh, 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 VDDensel in a GMP mode, so good manufacturing uh, process, good manufacturing practice mode, sorry. Uh, and this is basically the, the, the whole um, uh, rules which we need to follow to, uh, to do this are included in this collaboration. So uh, there was a very intensive uh, hands-on training uh, given by uh, experts of Mendus uh, to the CDMO uh, and the, the whole validation of the analytical methods uh, the proof that the that the plant would work in an aseptic mode, so it means that you you will not contaminate the product. This you also have to prove with uh, with aseptic studies and uh, a series of technical runs at full scale, uh, which have been carried out before starting uh, the first uh, GMP runs. Uh, currently, we have started uh, manufacturing the first GMP runs. And we expect to have um, the first runs uh, released, uh, let's say, by end of Q3. And uh, this um, contributes to the readiness uh, for the pivotal scale uh, readiness we have announced we will uh, uh, execute by uh, the end of this year. Excellent. So overall, we see that the manufacturing capabilities is one of Mendes's key operational strengths. Can you share some color on the importance of having large scale GMP production in place at this stage in the clinical development journey? Yeah, that's a good question because obviously you may think, yeah, why, why do we do that already now? And is it not too early, et cetera? It's very important to say that uh, due to the complexity of these products, <clears throat> due to the fact that uh, any changes in the process have to be uh, analyze with the respect to the to the risk of, of changing the product, etc., with respect to the product used uh, in past uh, clinical studies. It was very important for us, and it was a wise decision to have uh, done this, anticipated this uh, as as we are doing now. Um, it's it's very important that uh, it's not only the the transfer of the manufacturing and the execution of of the production uh, batches. It's also the whole work of uh, <clears throat> analyzing the data and also doing the whole uh, statistics, setting up the uh, updated regulatory files, which have to be uh, then uh, uh, sent to the authorities to show that, uh, that the new manufacturing is fit for purpose and uh, fit for uh, supplying uh, the next uh, large uh, clinical trials. So it, this, this exercise takes time and uh, it entails also some risks. So it was very important that we did that early. Uh, currently, it's, it's going fine. So it's a very complex process, which, uh, which is currently, uh, let's say, on track. And um, it's very important that we started this now because, as I uh, said before, we are preparing not only for the pivotal clinical trials, but we are also preparing for the future uh, entry into the market, which uh, is a very, very key uh, factor. And as I explained at the very beginning, we will not have time to change uh, things between, let's say, the uh, results of the uh, pivotal trials and the, the next step, which is the launch. So then following on from this, uh, could you sort of briefly comment on how having these manufacturing capabilities in place may support potential partner and discussions as, as you move on to this next stage of development? Yes, yeah, so partnering discussions uh, is something which uh, really uh, includes uh, uh, lots of discussions on, yeah, have, do you have a product, basically, because it's not only uh, clinical studies, it's not only, you know, research, etc. You, in order to, to, to move on, you need the product. And the product is something which, uh, which takes time 
to uh, to prepare uh, with with the whole production uh, activities which I have described before. So having this in hand and and having this on track is a very important uh, advantage which we have actually when we uh, discuss with potential partners uh, because obviously we get those questions and um, we we provide you know a, a very uh, open uh, information on on where we stand and uh, as i as i said before we are really on track at the moment and and that's very important very exciting uh, a moment for us to to be so finally could you recap some of the key milestones that investors should watch out for across the next 12 to 18 months sure from a manufacturing standpoint i would like to recap the following key milestones ahead of us so by the end of this year, we expect to complete successful implementation of the large-scale industrial GMP production of Vididensel with our CDMO partners, Northex Biologics in Sweden. In parallel, we continuously interact with health authorities and plan to submit the updated regulatory dossiers with all the data uh, demonstrating that the new manufacturing product is consistent and has the appropriate quality. Across the next year, we will consolidate manufacturing and logistics towards a more routine manufacturing with the goal to complete the integration of our industrial network and anticipate the future needs. In conclusion, the above key milestone will support the pivotal stage readiness of Vididensel as we have communicated. Fantastic. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Leopold. That was very insightful. If our audience would like to learn more about the company, please take a look at the research we have freely accessible on Mendes at edisongroup.com. Leopold, thanks again. Thanks very much, Aaron. It was a pleasure.